the largest spending plan in state history being proposed by Governor J.B. Pritzker. Then with the prospect of nearly a billion dollar deficits, the governor's going to look at raising taxes in a variety of ways while also doing a child tax credit and looking to get rid of the 1% grocery tax. Welcome back, Bishop on Air. Yesterday was a big day at the Illinois State Capitol with Governor J.B. Pritzker presenting his sixth budget to a joint session of state lawmakers. And uh, it's the, the largest state spending plan in history uh, for the state of Illinois. Uh, just to go back a bit, uh, when the governor first came into office, the, the spending bill was $40 billion. Since then, six years ago, uh, we're looking at now a $52.7 billion spending plan. Uh, so you've gone up more than $12 billion in spending. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the the you know various deficits that are projected have changed. Uh, the governor's proposed budget yesterday uh, with that level of spending says that there's going to be about a $300 million surplus. But that's only after looking at a variety of taxes. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this with yesterday, the governor laying out uh, some of his uh, agenda items, uh, including looking to get rid of medical debt. Uh, here's uh, some of the governor from yesterday's speech uh, in front of a joint session of the Illinois General Assembly. It's also time to help those who have suffered financial harm, often through their no, no fault of their own, from past failures of a broken health insurance and health care billing system. Treating a health emergency is not an optional expense. But too many Illinoisans have had their credit ruined or have been pushed into bankruptcy when they had one unexpected accident or one prolonged illness. So today, I propose that over the next four years, we eliminate $4 billion of medical debt for over 1 million Illinoisans. Working with a national nonprofit called RIP Medical Debt, it costs on average one penny to buy back and eliminate every dollar of medical debt. And we can start this year with a $10 million appropriation to relieve nearly $1 billion in medical debt for the first cohort of 340,000 Illinoisans. So I would love to see the contractual terms with this company that uh, the governor is looking to contract with to pay off some of this medical debt he claims will be uh, pennies on the dollar. Uh, so interesting to see that uh, proposed. But uh, the governor also proposing, uh, you know, various uh, uh, things he says are assistance for families. So you got the medical debt. Uh, he's also looking at uh, possibly uh, getting rid of the 1% to grocery tax. A child tax credit, eliminating medical debt, lowering the cost of health care, making it easier to get a college education, bringing quality child care closer to home so moms and dads can go to work. These are not esoteric policy proposals, but actually do lift the burdens up away from everyday Illinoisans. And even though inflation continues to cool off, folks are still feeling the squeeze every week at the grocery store. So there's one more thing that we ought to do. For the good of our state's working families, let's permanently eliminate the grocery tax. So uh, some applause there. Uh, and if you recall, uh, uh, two budgets ago, the governor uh, announced that he was going to suspend the grocery tax for a limited amount of time. And he also uh, froze the state's gas tax increase for six months. That essentially led to two gas tax increases within six months of, his child, of, of, of itself, um, what typically is supposed to be a year in between. Uh, but uh, you also had that uh, temporary, uh, you know, zeroing out of the 1% grocery tax. Uh, so that's, again, another thing that the, the governor is proposing here. You heard about the, the child tax credit. More from the governor on that issue. My budget also proposes investing $12 million to create a child tax credit for families raising our youngest children. By targeting this investment at low and middle income families with children under three, we can put money back in the pockets of our newest parents who need it most and make those early years just a little bit easier. 
Altogether, we're making a $23 million investment that will put us on a path to birth equity, a path and a destination that Janine and her colleagues in the field can be proud of. Janine is here today, and I would ask her to stand and be recognized. So with uh, State of the State and State of the Union speeches, you always have people being highlighted uh, as uh, guests of the governor or guests of the president, for instance. But the reaction to the governor's speech uh, obviously was was somewhat mixed. You have Illinois House Minority Leader Tony McCombie, uh, Republican from Savannah. She had both good things and bad things to say about uh, the governor's proposed budget. She said two things that are extremely important to House Republicans is that education is funded and that the pension bill is paid. And she says that that was in this budget, so that's good. But the bad part is she said that it's going to have a $910 million tax increase. And among those tax increases, a doubling of the state's tax on sports betting. So all you sports bettors out there, you're going to be paying not 15% tax, but a, I think a 30-plus percent tax. Uh, that's estimated to generate around $200 million. You've got a cap on the sales tax that retailers discount is expected uh that's an interesting tax here because the retailers discount uh if you're not familiar with it retailers uh, they are tax collectors <laughs> you go to the store you're paying sales tax that retailer has infrastructure that they have to pay for to collect that tax right uh so they historically in illinois get a discount in their taxes uh, but apparently the governor's plan here is to uh, cap that to a certain level, uh, and that could increase taxes by $101 million. There's also an adjustment to the individual income tax standard deduction that the governor is proposing, and that's estimated to increase taxes by $93 million. The most expensive tax hike is proposed in capping the net operating loss deduction for businesses, and that's estimated to raise about $526 million. Uh, the Illinois Retail Merchants Association responded to uh, the governor's proposal and said the retail discount is a partial reimbursement to the hardworking retailers across Illinois who collect taxes uh, on behalf of state and local governments. Contrary to claims, this proposal does not just target large retail stores, but would impact retailers of all sizes, from independent grocers to the corner hardware store. This is Rob Carr, president and CEO of the Illinois Retail Merchants Association, saying regardless, it should not fall on retailers to take on all the costs of administering the sales tax code. We look forward to working with the governor on this issue. Uh, so the, the retailers across the state, uh, not happy about that proposal. Again, a proposal that could increase essentially the tax on retailers by $101 million for the next fiscal year. Uh, but the Illinois Chamber of Commerce, they put out a statement about that, uh, uh, that, that cap on loss deductions. And they say they're disappointed in the governor's proposal, the Illinois Chamber of Commerce says, uh, to extend the cap on business net operating losses. The cap is nothing more than forced borrowing of funds from Illinois businesses to finance government, they said. We are also disappointed by the governor's proposed reduction in the sales tax retailers discount. This is a stealth tax increase on our retail sector who are managing increased operating expenses expenses due to rising labor and uh, raw materials forcing them to operate on already razor thin margins. Uh, you also got to consider, I mean, you've got retailers struggling in places like Chicago that are just, you know, smash and grabs and crash and grabs and so on. Uh, so interesting to see uh, some of those reactions. There's a lot in the budget, and we're going to be unpacking this, of course, uh, in the, uh, the weeks and months ahead. Uh, so people, uh, just so you understand, we've got... Um, uh, until May 31st at the State House for them to pass a budget with simple majorities. Uh, they're scheduled to end May 24th, but they've got the rest of the month of May there with contingent budget days. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But between now and then, there's going to be budget hearings, a lot of discussion about these various proposals. Uh, but clearly, and we'll talk a lot more about this in the next segment, there's a lot of frustration about uh, the cost of migrants. And that's something else that the governor laid out in his budget address yesterday is uh, his his willingness to continue as it is with helping migrants in the state of Illinois, uh, pushing back against the ideas of ending sanctuary status that people like the Illinois Freedom Caucus have uh, pushed for. 
Uh, and it's even uh, getting into the halls of uh, Chicago City Council where uh, constituents there are raising their frustrations about uh, the resources going to migrants. But all the migrant costs, increased costs for uh, migrant health care, another 180 plus million dollars for migrant housing in the fiscal year that's coming up. Uh, these are some of the things that the governor is proposing as well. So we'll get to that coming up in the next segment. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and uh, follow along with us each and every weekday morning as we broadcast cast here from my home studio appreciate you guys being here and uh sounding off in the chat room uh it's always good to see just the flood of people there uh it makes me feel like i'm doing something right right uh and as far as uh, getting out some information that you guys need to wake up to each and every weekday morning so appreciate you uh stay tuned like subscribe hit that notification bell find me anywhere go to bishoponair.com